So in the introduction to this video series, I introduced you to the idea of the gluttony and sloth theory of obesity and the calories in, calories out theory. Okay? Basically, these theories, which this is the main paradigm of almost everyone in the fitness and nutrition industry, basically say that fat loss and fat gain are the result of your conscious behavioral habits around the way you eat and the way you exercise. If you're overweight, it's because you have no self-control around eating and you're lazy. If you're lean, it's because you're, you know, this implies that it's because you're watching your caloric intake every day and you're exercising to burn so and so amount of calories. And this is the reason why lean people are lean and fat people are fat. Well, let me ask you a question. You may have noticed that the body weight tends to stay pretty stable over time. That you may weigh, you know, 152 pounds or 176 pounds or 137 or 215 or whatever it is, but you tend to hover right around that spot for month after month, year after year. Now, this is kind of amazing when you think about it because just a tiny imbalance of calories, like say 50 calories a day, discrepancy between the amount you're burning and the amount you're eating, should over time result in huge changes in weight loss. But they don't. The body weight stays stable over time. Now, why does this happen? Is it because you are doing complex calculations in your head every day where you're figuring in your basal metabolic rate and you're counting up all the calories from the activity you did that day and then you're counting up all the calories from all the meals you ate and you're making sure that the amount you ingested matches very precisely the amount you burned that day? Is that why your body weight stays stable? Or is it something else? Well, actually what's going on is that in exactly the same way that we have our blood oxygen level regulated, our blood sugar level regulated, our blood pressure level regulated, our breathing rate, our pulse rate, all regulated biologically, our body also has built into it a biological regulatory mechanism for our body weight and body fat. Okay, and this is wired into us over the course of evolution. Why? Well, the reason that we needed a, a system to regulate our body weight over time is basically because throughout most of the course of human evolution, we didn't have grocery stores around every corner. Food availability was not always a guarantee. Sometimes food was scarce. We had to deal with droughts. We had to deal with harsh winters. We had to deal with food shortages and famine. And as a result of that, the genes that got passed on over time were the ones that were really good about surviving periods of food shortage or famine and then quickly rebounding to a normal healthy weight. Okay? And what this is, what I'm referring to, is something that obesity researchers now understand as the central key to fat loss and fat gain. And it's called the body fat set point. This is the central key to everything if you want fat loss. And interestingly enough, it's also something that pretty much no one in the fitness industry and the nutrition industry talk about or have any awareness of. So the reason that your body weight stays stable over long periods of time has nothing to do with you calculating your metabolic rate and the amount of calories you burn during exercise and counting up all your, your calories that you ate that day. It has to do with the simple fact that humans are wired with a complex system of brain regions and hormones that are designed to regulate our body weight. And the way that they do that is by precisely matching the amount of calories in to the amount of calories out. In other words, when there are discrepancies, when one day you may burn more calories or eat more calories or eat way less calories, or you may do it for a period of time, the body is designed in such a way that it regulates how much you eat and how much you burn to match whatever is going on in the environment. So for example, if you suffer through a famine, what happens is two things. Hunger level goes up, which motivates you to find food since food is scarce. And if you can't find food, the metabolism slows down. Okay? And this is all a very intelligent mechanism that is designed to make sure that you survive during this period of famine. This is how the body fat regulation system works.
So the body fat regulation system is really not all that difficult to understand. It's pretty simple. What happens if you, for example, burn a bunch of calories, if you do a bunch of exercise? In evolutionary terms, this might have meant that you had to, you were at war with another tribe, or you had to run from one place to another, or you went on a long hunt. Okay? What happens is hunger goes up. Hunger goes up, motivates you to find food and eat to replace all of the calories you burn that day. And if that doesn't happen, then metabolism drops. So for example, if you decide to do a bunch of extra exercise, what does your body do in response to that? Well, it increases hunger levels, makes you hungrier, you go and find food to eat more calories to make up for the extra calories that you burned. It's keeping the amount of calories in stable and consistent with the amount of calories out. On the other hand, if you are dieting, if you're restricting calories, or you're suffering through a famine and food is not available, what happens then? Well, hunger goes up, but since you can't find food, the metabolism has to slow down in order to match the decreased amount of calories that you're taking in. Again, it's doing this to cancel out any caloric deficit and ensure that the amount of calories in match the amount of calories out. This is how the body fat set point works, and this is how your body weight stays stable over time. And even though you may lose weight in the short term by either starving during a period of famine or by following the typical fat loss advice of burning more calories than you take in, you may lose weight for a period of time, but then the weight quickly rebounds. This is the yo-yo phenomenon that many people know about. Now, if you understand this idea of the body fat set point and the fact that the body is always wired in such a way that it cancels out any caloric deficit, it matches the amount of calories in to the amount of calories out, then you immediately understand that there is a huge hole in the calories in, calories out theory. And this is why obesity researcher Stefan Gayounet says this is where the calories in, calories out theory fails. It does not account for that dynamic regulation of energy balance. It doesn't account for these fluctuations in hunger and metabolic rate that match the amount of calories in to the amount of calories out. Now the bigger problem with the gluttony and sloth theory of obesity and the you know, just burn more calories than you take in approach to fat loss is this. It implies that fat gain and fat loss are all consciously driven processes are all the result of your choices around how you eat and how you exercise. And this just is not true. There, has no, there is no real credible scientific evidence to show that fat gain and fat loss are the result of consciously driven processes. In fact, the science is extremely clear that when you try to lose fat by starving yourself or by burning more calories than you take in, over 95% of people fail to achieve long-term fat loss, and they end up regaining all the fat that they lost, and usually plus some extra. So the right way to understand fat gain and fat loss is that it is a biologically regulated process that you have limited, very limited, conscious control over. Okay, and to understand this idea, let me illustrate with an analogy. Breathing, for example, or sleeping, Okay? These are both processes that we have some degree of conscious control over, but they're also, more importantly, biologically regulated processes. So for example, you can hold your breath and deprive your body of oxygen. You can, I can tell you, you know, oh, just hold your breath, starve your body of oxygen. And you can do that, you can hold your breath. The same thing is true with sleep. I can tell you, deprive your body of sleep. You can force yourself to stay up till two in the morning, set your alarm clock for four in the morning so you only get two hours of sleep, and great, you forced yourself to get only two hours of sleep. But what happens after that? What happens if you hold your breath? Okay? You deprive your body of oxygen, but then your body's gonna force you to start breathing again, and it's gonna start hyperventilating in compensation for the fact that you were just depriving it of oxygen. Now the same exact thing happens with sleep. If you deprive your body of sleep, 
you only sleep two hours a night, guess what the body does to compensate for that? Well, the next night, or maybe two, day, two nights later, now all of a sudden, you need extra sleep. You're even more tired the next day, and you sleep 11 hours instead of eight hours like you normally would, right? This is pretty common sense stuff, but we don't apply the same logic and the same understanding of biological regulation to fat loss, but this is exactly the same thing that is going on with fat loss. If you deprive your body of calories by burning more calories than you take in, the body compensates for that. The, the body fat set point kicks in, either hunger goes up, metabolism goes down, and one of those two things counteracts this. So hunger goes up, forces you to eat more. This is why the vast majority of studies done on exercise show no fat loss whatsoever. It's because people simply eat more and cancel out any caloric deficit from the extra 500 calories they burned with that workout. And this is also why dieting or starving the body of calories shows short-term weight loss. When you forcibly starve your body of calories, deprive it of calories, you absolutely will get short-term weight loss. Then the body compensates in exactly the same way it did when you were holding your breath or depriving it of sleep. The body compensates, slows the metabolism, you regain all the fat you lost. And that's how the body fat set point system works. So if you understand this idea of the body fat regulation system and why the body weight stays stable over long periods of time, there's one question that should immediately be jumping out in your mind right now, and that is, then how do people get fat? Why does the body weight go up over time if we are wired to keep our body weight stable over time? And that's a great question. The answer to it is a couple things. One, our bodies are actually wired much better to protect against weight loss than they are against weight gain. So if you think about this in an evolutionary context, what was a bigger threat to your survival 100,000 years ago? Was it that you were gonna overeat and get obese and die from that? Or was it that you were gonna have a food shortage and not be able to find food and starve to death? Well, obviously 100,000 years ago, food shortage was a much bigger threat to our survival. And this was true for the vast majority of the time that our genome was evolving. So the genes that got passed on were the ones that were particularly good at preventing death from starvation and not necessarily the ones that were so good at preventing death from fat gain and obesity. So the body fat regulation system is wired to defend against fat loss much better than it is to defend against fat gain. The other thing we need to consider, perhaps the most important thing, is the simple fact that if we look at wild animals, such as a deer or a lion or a cheetah or a wolf or whatever, have you ever seen an animal like that in the wild that is overweight or obese? The answer is clearly no. You do not see wild animals that are obese. Okay? So why is it that humans get obese and animals don't? Even if you look at wild humans, and what I mean by that is hunter-gatherer humans still living a very simple life out in nature. And we don't have to invoke theories of you know, people who lived 30,000 years ago. We can talk about tribal populations, hunter-gatherer populations that exist today. And what we see in those populations is basically they don't get obese. These people, just like wild animals, wild humans, don't really become overweight and obese. Now, if we understand the obesity epidemic, we can look at this and say, this is a modern phenomenon. This is something that really has only been happening in the last hundred years. So this is not you know, a problem with our biology or a problem with our genetics. This is a problem with modern civilization. And certain factors in our current modern environment are obesogenic, meaning they predispose and cause obesity. So what this means is that obesity and overweight is by definition a dysfunctional body fat set point. The body fat set point mechanism, your biological regulation system for regulating your body fat percentage is not operating correctly. So there are certain factors in the modern environment that cause this system to dysfunction 
And when that happens, you get a discrepancy between the amount of calories taken in and the amount of calories burned. Now the important distinction here is this isn't a problem of your conscious decision to consume more calories than you burn. And so the solution is not simple starvation and willpower. You know, eat less and burn more calories. That implies that it's all happening within your conscious control. And the important thing that's going on here is this is a biologically regulated process and it is a biological dysfunction when you're overweight or obese. And the right way to correct it is not through starvation, not through depriving the body of calories. That actually just drives the body fat set point up over time, which is the opposite of what you want. So what we need is to re-engage this natural biological regulation system that regulates our body fat. We need to re-engage it so that it is working properly again. So the next question becomes, what is it in this modern environment that is causing the body fat set point mechanism to dysfunction? If you, if you want to understand fat loss, if you want to approach fat loss intelligently, you need to understand why this system is not operating properly and how to re-engage it. So there are two factors in the modern environment that are causing a dysfunctional body fat set point mechanism. And these are the two factors that are at the heart of the obesity epidemic. This is why the body fat set point rises over time and why we create a disharmony between the amount of calories we take in and the amount of calories we burn. Okay? These are the factors that are disrupting our biology. So the first factor is neurological. Okay? It's something going on in the brain that is causing this body fat regulation system to not function properly. The second factor is on the cellular and hormonal levels. It's something happening in, at the cellular level in your body that's causing the body fat set point mechanism to not function properly. So let's look at the neurological side of why the body fat set point rises over time, why people become overweight and obese. Okay. So what is it that's happening in the brain that's causing, that's driving this obesity epidemic? 